Hello everyone and welcome back to The Geek Wave. This is the low budget show. It's the show so low it has no budget. And this week we are headed to the circus to talk about a silly concept. that I don't know why I chose this one for this week. We're nearing the end of the year. So I'm kind of in like, we don't need to do like a big thing because we'll do the top 10 and everything towards the end. But had a couple of glasses of wine the other day, just started talking about a specific clown from my childhood, which led me to start thinking about like what other clowns exist in popular culture, which led me to say, this could be a video. So why am I wasting time talking to people in my real life about this when I could talk to myself online for about 30 minutes about these specific clowns? So that's what happened. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. No, I don't know. Fun. It's the clowns. You know, we've talked about some animals of pop culture. I love that topic. Why not talk about some of the clowns of pop culture? All those cool clowns and stuff. Before we get to that, though, we have a couple of trailers we need to talk about. I think it's primarily trailers this week. Yeah, it's, it's trailers and like some news associated with trailers and stuff. Bunch of big stuff. All of it coming out next year? Looking at the list, yeah, I think all of it's coming out next year. First one, let's talk about this because I find it very fascinating. This is, we got a trailer and a first look, at, uh, well, because there was time before I actually did the actual show. We had an initial first look at what was going to be the new Fallout TV series, which I remember them announcing that years ago. And I was like, I guess... I mean, that sounds fun. A lot of people I know love Fallout. Like, it's one of those games that has its audience, has its genre. Everyone tells me it's, like, specifically my vibe, that, like, post-nuclear war, 50s Americana kind of vibe going for it. I think I've played one game. Fallout 4, maybe? Is that one of them? I don't know. For, like, an hour. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is... I don't like games, but this looks fun. So that's cool, I guess. So we got a couple of new pictures. I wasn't aware of any of the cast members for this show. I did know that it was... Who was it from Westworld that was doing it? It was the Nolan, right? The Nolan from Westworld was doing it. I think that's who it was. Jonathan Nolan, is that who it was? I don't know. Somebody from Westworld's like, well, this failed. I guess we'll come here now. So that's what it was. And Ella Purnell's in it. I'm like, she's great. I love seeing her. And then Walton Goggins is in it. And I'm like, that's great. He's cool. And the photos looked great. Like, I genuinely think the photos and the set photos we saw for this were pretty cool. The trailer came out a couple days ago. And I, I, okay, I do like it. I genuinely think this trailer looks exciting. It's a cool aesthetic, practical effects. That's really cool. There's some tongue-in-cheek nature to it. Like, kind of like, it starts off, the trailer starts off with just kind of like, it's gloomy and sad and the world's apart and then doop de doop it gets to comedy or something. And that's cool, you know? A tongue-in-cheek stuff like that, literally playing into the feeling of that era works well for this property. Based on what I know about it, which is not much, that's fine by me. You know, it's one of my favorite eras is that era of just like, it's the white picket fence America falling apart. I love that stuff. And just like, there's so much good stuff out lately, just about like nuclear, like war and the destruction of that. So having like a post-apocalyptic version of that is kind of cool. You know, if you take the vibe of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt and you put it in just like Mad Max, I think that's the tone it's going for. And that's really exciting to me. I think it genuinely looks interesting. I do trust the creative team behind this to make this into an actual TV show, which I think is really cool. I don't... Is there, like, a narrative character throughout the game? Because don't you, like, customize your own character? I don't know. Again, I played one of the games for an hour. I don't know. My other part about this I'm thinking about is... Sure does have a lot of Halo vibes to it. Now, you might not remember this, folks, because it was so long ago, but just last year, or it might have even been the beginning of this year, I genuinely don't remember when the Halo TV series came out. Let's quickly look that up. Okay, it came out last year in March? Holy shit. Man, March of 2022, a, a time that nobody remembers. Halo came out on Paramount+. Plus. 
That's getting a season two in February of 2024. Did you know that? I bet you didn't know that. Season two of Halo is coming in February. That's insane. But I'm watching this trailer for Fallout, and my first reaction isn't like, oh, thank God, finally. It's like, oh, is this going to be a Halo? Is this going to become a Halo? Because kind of feels like a Halo. Even The Last of Us, which I am excited to see the second season of, it does make me go, how many more of these are we doing? The TV versions, I guess, are doing better than the movie versions, because there was an Uncharted movie that came out recently. Eli Roth filmed a Borderlands movie, and it has yet to come out after like a year on ice. So I guess Fallout's the next one. It is from Amazon, though. And isn't it like a, you know, like a pseudo-capitalistic, like, undertones of Fallout? I could be completely off base there. I always thought there was just kind of like the, look at us advertise and market stuff and like this weird, like, you know, classic setting. Am I wrong about that? You know, it has like that pinup art style where it's like, buy a coffee from here or something. Amazon, not the place I like to do that. What I will give Amazon credit for, they let their shows run their course, you know? I can't imagine a season three of Halo, nor can I imagine a season two of Fallout, but Fallout's got a better chance of getting at least a five seasons, which is pretty much the case for the next show we're going to talk about, which is we have a couple things to talk about from the boys universe. Yay! My favorite topic. Anybody who knows me knows I've kind of, I'm kind of checked out of the boys universe at this point. I think there was something to say about parodying, like, the specific nature of the comic book movie while turning yourself into this interesting indictment on Donald Trump. I I think they balanced that really well for three seasons. I don't need to see more of that, and I certainly do not need to see a spinoff TV show called The Boys Mexico. I can't think of a worse title for a thing than this, this, like, it's the boys, but Mexico, that makes me think it's going to be like a CSI Miami, you know, NCIS, like wherever the fuck, Vegas. It's so lazy. It sounds so lazy. And you have a couple big names that are going to be producing it. Diego Luna being one of them. And who was it? Was it uh, Gail Garcia Banal was the other one that's going to be producing it too? With potentially both of them starring in small roles for that. I'm like, shut up, okay? I like you guys way too much to want to see you in the boys universe and I don't want any more of the boys universe going from being the show making fun of the superhero movies and their extended continuity and like the in real life jokes that you make to becoming a show that has three spin-offs, an animated one gen v and now the boys mexico it's insanity and it, it definitely feels like we're losing the plot and I cannot get excited for anything about that and then we got the trailer for season four, which comes out, I guess, next year. I, I, I don't care. I can't care anymore about this. I don't see anything interesting. It's a divided America, folks. That is at least an idea to play with in a superhero genre. The two extremes. You have the sociopath Homelander, the right wingers, and that's fun. And then, the, you know, like the down to earth left or whatever. Who, who fucking cares what represents what? It's Homelander against Starlight, and I couldn't give less of a shit about it. And then whatever Jeffrey Dean Morgan's going to be doing with them, I I don't think I'm going to cover it on the channel. We'll talk about it when, like, you know, the episodes wrap up, and I'll talk more about, like, the boys, and, and I don't know. Like, would anybody be interested in seeing, like, a video that I make where I, I kind of talk about, like, why we're kind of tired of this? I don't know. Like... I, and this is completely unrelated, completely unrelated. I feel like if Netflix dropped Jupiter's Legacy, like, right now, like, this year, we'd be happier for it. I don't know. So, the boys' universe continues to grow in horrific ways to who cares, whatever. Let's talk about something that's a little bit more exciting. This is, we had CinemaCon, no, we didn't, was it Chicago LA con or something one of the big a con happened recently and we got our first look at Furiosa and Furiosa is the prequel to Mad Max Fury Road it stars Anya Taylor-Joy as the titular Furiosa replacing Charlie's Theron and I'm 
I'm all in, you know? I, I've been hesitant about Fallout. I've been hesitant about the boys. I'm all in when it comes to George Miller. I've seen this man make an insane movie about a pig going to a city. I've seen this man make an insane movie about a dancing penguin. I've seen him make three insane movies of varying quality when it comes to a Mad Max universe. A prequel with today's technology, I, I know... Not everyone likes to hear that, but the technology we can use for the visionary style that Miller goes for in these movies is way more complex than it was in 2014 when we were making Fury Road. So I'm all in for him doing another one of these insane masterpieces. I love all of his movies. I don't think he's made an actual shitty movie. And Fury Road's so stylized and cool. And you're watching this trailer. the The effects are kind of still like hyper realized, where we don't feel like we have the finished polish on them yet. But that's great. E even just like if they don't look perfect or the colors are saturated to a certain extent, it makes people like, "Ooh, this looks cheap." His cheap still looks better than anything else that's expensive from other people. Like he knows where to move the camera, how intense to make the sequences. It's fantastic. Anya Taylor-Joy is doing so much work with those eyes. You are paying for those eyes. You put them to work. Even Hemsworth feels like this is like a career-defining role for him. Where you're like, yeah, put this little grubby freak in like the Australian desert and he'll feel right at home there. It's perfect. This is a really good trailer that just got me excited for more of this world. Got me excited to go back to this world. And I'm always excited to go back to this world. It's fantastic. Fan fucking tastic. So cool to see that. I like the idea of doing the Furiosa prequel. You could have just continued on to Furiosa. I, I believe you could have done that. But to go back and kind of like see her stepping into who she's going to become, she's, I guess, fending for herself. She's trying to get back home. It's another one of those like mad dash against authority movies, which is exactly what George Miller wants to do. But we have cool cars and awesome fire everywhere. I'm on board. If this movie also has like a sequence where we see like the Doof Warrior get the guitar, then it's a 10 out of 10. Even if it doesn't have that, it's probably a 10 out of 10. Like there, you can't go wrong with this. Even if it looks dumb, which it doesn't, you can't go wrong with this. Like it's it's already the most interesting action film with a trailer for next year. I think that wholeheartedly. The fall Guy, who cares? Argyle, who gives a shit? Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, I'm all in. I'm all in. Speaking of things I'm all in with, uh, the House of the Dragon, did they have a trailer? I, I think there was like rumor they're going to have one. Uh, at least, the very least, there's a confirmation they're coming out next year. I didn't watch a trailer and I didn't see any promotional pictures. So there's your House of the Dragon talk. I put that in my notes thinking I'd learn what they were doing, but what's the point? Doesn't matter. We have one more interesting trailer to talk about, and that is the trailer, the trailer, folks, for Godzilla x Kong, The New Empire. We are riding high on Godzilla Minus One, a film that was incredible, sensational, beautiful, and is so fucking awesome. And that was a self-serious tone about, like, the war effort in Japan and, like, not trusting your government and rising up as an individual in the community to protect your own future. Well, this one's like, what if Godzilla got a power up and had like pink scaly pink scales? And that's kind of cool. And what if we had like a weird mechanical hand that Kong can wear because he's old now and they team up to fight like a weird balding gorilla guy? And, it, and yeah, fine. You know what? I like both types of Godzilla stuff. I like a big lunatic just bouncing about, which is what this one was. And I like the self serious, you know, it's a metaphor for nuclear war which is what minus one is. So this is fun. You know, like they're running together, they're tag teaming. I've seen people compare it to like Rocky and Apollo, which I'm like, yeah, that's kind of exactly how I'd say that is. What a fun time at the movies. Uh, it's just kind of exciting to see all this Godzilla content and it's all pretty much good, which is pretty crazy. What a silly, stupid movie this looks to be. I kind of appreciate that. I kind of love how dumb that is. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Could be fun. Could be bad. Either way, Godzilla's always good to see Godzilla stuff. Yeah. <laughs> let's take a break. And when we come back, let's talk about the, a, a dumb topic. Even dumber than these previous ones.
there's no logical reason to be doing this episode like right now <laughs> i mean there's no clown content i need to talk about there's no like hbo documentary that's like the life of a clown or like it's like a revitalization of the clown genre there isn't one there's no there's no reason for me to do this but I was just like, yeah, I was thinking about a clown the other day, and I was like, it's it's time to kind of uh, just get back into the world of clowns, I guess. Because clowns are prominent throughout pop culture, like, it's one of those, like, job staples that you can, like, pinpoint exactly what it is. There's various interpretations of it. For this list, we're excluding mimes, because I feel like you could do a mime thing. I'm not gonna do a mime thing, unless we get to, like, a thousand episodes and I'm, I'm running low. But clowns, you know, everyone knows what a clown is. Everyone, like, can probably list you off a clown that they are familiar with. You've probably seen a clown in real life. I mean, is it a profession that people would, would like, call noble? We are like, yeah. If you, like, met somebody for, like a, like, a blind date and they found out you were a clown, would that be, like like, sexy? Would that be, like, intimidating or, like would they make fun of you like if i was on a date and i was like yeah i'm a professional clown would you react with like oh god he makes good money for being a goofball or like what the fuck is wrong with this psychopath that's a great question that i don't think can be answered because i guess it's kind of just like a comedian right but it's not really because you have to hire them specifically to do like a gag thing and, like, do kids like those gag things anymore? And has, like, the culture at large, like, turn them into, like, this distorted image where they're, like, evil? You know? Like, I would argue the most iconic thing clowns have done recently is just, like, follow people in cars and stuff. Do you remember, like, the big phenomenon where clowns mysteriously popped up around, like, America and they started to, like, chase you and stuff? That was weird. <laughs> It's all fake. Like, it's all obviously fake and it's so stupid, but that happened. We did that, folks. <laughs> we did that, you know? And I think that that wasn't the thing that changed clowns forever. I genuinely can't think of, like, when clowns would have been, like, in the, like, you know, like, headed upwards, like, in the incline. They've always been on the decline as long as I've known clowns. I feel like for this generation, like, horror movies killed the clown, you know, where it's no longer, like, cool to be a clown, but my favorite clown, <laughs> yeah, I think she's pretty cool, we can, I think we're gonna end with my favorite clown, she'll be in the thumbnail, so you'll, you'll know who I'm talking about, clowns, I made this list, I went through all of my, like, what I do, you know, I went through memes, which is just people being chased by clowns. I went through comic books, movies, and television. And I went through just, like, advertisements and stuff like that. I tried to find famous real-life clowns. Which, you've probably met a clown. They're probably not famous. I think there's, like, one famous. I put two on this list. And I I don't even know if the one's real now that I think about it. And, well, one's kind of, well, like, a phenomenon, too. Like, the other one's kind of a phenomenon. I guess, actually, no. I got, like, four real ones, maybe. I don't know. Five. I forgot about the serial killer. <laughs> oh no! But like, okay, let's okay, let's get John Wayne Gacy out of the way. He dressed up as a clown, and um, I feel like that also set clown relations back pretty far because he was a clown, and that's really scary, <laughs> and that kind of just kills you from enjoying it, you know. But it's a it's a clown that people know you know you'd recognize if somebody dressed up as that clown you'd know them disgusting uh we're not gonna spend any more time on john wayne gacy i'm sorry i had to bring it up but i think when it comes to like iconic clowns you're you you remember him <laughs> you know he he's he's remembered um I'm sorry, everybody. I'm sorry I started off on such a sad note. Uh, let's go to an, another one. Bozo the Clown. Ooh, Bozo the Clown. That's a classic, classic one. He had a TV show, and he was like a guy. I don't know. This is before my time. I'll be honest with you folks. I'm not an expert on clowns. I know y you see me every day in the mirror painting my face white and putting that big red nose on. 
but I'm not an expert on clowns. I couldn't tell you if he was popular or just somebody everybody was aware of. I think he's popular because he's kind of like the the look of a clown, but I don't know. It's before my time. Like I'm seeing his TV show ran from 59 to 62. That's before I was born. So I don't know. Is is that like a good clown? (laughs) He's like, I guess the most iconic clown name, right? Bozo's the clown everybody thinks of. Uh, besides the other one, like the real like one that's nice, not a serial killer clown. I think he's the nice one. The other one that came up in my research. Now, I, I looked at a list of a bunch of real life clowns. And I started to think to myself, I can't honestly just sit here and list off every like famous clown from the entire history of clowning i can't i probably would and if you know me in the real world if you want to have that conversation i'm down to clown okay but i I decided i was going to put this guy in this is emmett kelly he's famous for being the hobo clown you might realize he's got like bad clothes on and he's got a sad face now that's as far as I can go to knowing this guy. And I just kind of like the tragedy of that. I, I always relate, and we could do an entire separate topic talking about the most famous sad clowns throughout pop culture. Like a guy who's famous for being funny and, and on top of the world, but deep down they're broken. Like if they looked in the mirror, the clown wouldn't be smiling back at them. But this guy seems to have pioneered it, turned it into an art form. Like every photo you see of this lunatic... He's just a sad boy, like, in big makeup, like, this is what my life has come to. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, clearly, he died young. He lived till 1979. He was born in 1898, and that that really fucked with my conception of time for a minute. That somebody almost made it to the, the 1980s that was born in the 1800s. Uh, he seems like a normal guy, but I don't think he is because normal people do not become clowns. Sorry, that's just how it is. So there you go. Emmett Kelly. You can look him up if you want to. I'm sure it'd be great. And uh, do we have any other like real life ones? Yeah, we do. This guy you might be familiar with. I put this one on, I think, solely because of the popularity of the network show that he appeared on, which is America's Got Talent. Do you remember Puddles the Clown? He was like a Victorian era clown who was sad. And um, he went on America's Got Talent and like did really well. And it's like he's like an operatic singer, but like a sad, freaky clown. And I, I just, I respect that. I respect the commitment to the bit of just you could be any type of clown you chose to be a sad freaky one and you sing sad music and it's like depressing to watch you i watched that season of america's got talent i haven't watched any of the new ones this might be the last season i watched i just remember being like yeah this is definitely a clown guy i i i respond to it and I think he's pretty cool. He's got a great voice. He did some stuff with Postmodern Jukebox, which I think was really cool. Like, he worked on the their song Royals from Lord, which I really like. It's one of my favorite songs from my favorite album. So that was really cool to see. And we have one more. This is more like a phenomenon. And it's just like, look at these cool guys. You know, Juggalos, if you could call them. But they, they have music. They have music. And some might say this music's insane and that this posse is um, is, cool, is cool. It's the Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> Do you think the Insane Clown Posse is just like, what if like Kiss was like on acid? Just like, what if we were like disgusting, grubby, freaky people that just like, like ate flesh? I don't know. I couldn't. I don't know their music. I don't know their music, but just seeing these photos, it reminds me of if Kiss was like Thug, and that's really fun. Are Kiss clowns? I didn't put them on the list, but could you classify like the Star Child and Catman as like clowns? I don't think you can because clown isn't in their name. But the Insane Clown Posse, it's got its fans. 
it's got its audience. There's juggalos, so that's cool. Like all these photos seem like there's two guys. There's Lunatic one and Lunatic two. One of them's got like they both have big eyebrows, but like the one's got like more like crescent shapes where everything's kind of like a beard over the beard. The other one's just kind of like Batman. If that makes sense to anybody, please let me know. <laughs> Out of those real life clowns, who do you like the best? John Wayne Gacy, Bozo, Emmett Kelly, Puddles, or the Insane Clown Posse? Do you like any of them? <laughs> oh, God, what am I doing? Do you ever just sit back and wonder what's become of your life? That's the kind of like, uh, I'm having that feeling right now, just kind of like trying to understand why I chose to do this. Like, I really got nothing about clowns to talk about. God damn it. All right, should we just do the evil, creepy ones that are like murderers and like fictional and disgusting? Because I pretty much, I think that's like one half of the list and the other ones are like good. So clowns in pop culture, they have essentially become these disgusting anarchist symbols of dis like disgust like j they're just fucking awful you see a clown you know something evil's happening it's the joke in the adams family you know whatever so let's go through it we'll start with the obvious one the probably the first clown people can recognize is pennywise the dancing clown from the book from the tv movie and from the the other movies of it, it's the it clown. It's Pennywise, uh, iconic. I think this is the most iconic clown in popular culture. I think it's one that everyone could pull up. Like any interpretation of it, just like the freaky, disgusting, like Victorian era one. That's Bill Skarsgård. Look at this absolute menace. A big bulbous head, terrible red hair just a disgusting creature that you just kind of like are afraid of and it eats you and it's a fucking demon and you're just like get the fuck away from me you freaky little piece of shit like absolutely rancid and cursed and gross i don't really like those it movies i think they're just okay but the best thing they did was like really revitalize like this character as a menace to a whole new generation like this is going to destroy people's perception of a clown probably forever. I don't think there's any coming back from this interpretation of a clown. I don't. I don't think you can come back from this. The one with uh, who played uh, who played the other clown, you know, the one from TV, <laughs> like the 90s movie, Tim Curry. Was he the clown? I can't remember. He just looks like a clown. <laughs> I don't think there's anything scary about him. Just the fact that he's kind of ugly. But that's what happens, isn't it? When you're doing a TV movie, you just get a stupid-looking clown guy. What about Captain Spaulding? Any Captain Spaulding fans in the house? Fans of uh, the House of a Thousand Corpses? We had any fans in the house? Hey? This guy is like... If Charles Bronson was like a, like a maniac. God... Rob Zombie's weird. I, I think we should do a video about Rob Zombie. Because what the fuck is wrong with him? I don't know. This is just like a another one where it's like, this guy's weird. Kind of silly, kind of dumb. The actor seemed really cool, though. I don't know. Just, I, I, I would say iconic. I think it's more iconic to like horror fans and just people of that genre than it is to like the w wider like public. I think his place as like the second most iconic clown themed character has been overtaken by Art the Clown from the Terrifier franchise. I really do think that people are so like disgusted by Art the Clown. I don't get it. Like he's not that messed up. He's like just a normal clown guy. But I dig it. Like it's a, it's another one that's kind of like in the Victorian era Look at him in like this monochrome piece where it's like there's no red makeup. The red is the blood that he spills on himself when he kills a person. I liked the, both Terrifier movies. I'm super excited for the third one to come out next Halloween. This is a cool franchise and I've, I've just been like, like responding to it very well. 
But I, this is also like exactly what you'd kind of want from like a killer clown because he does like fucking stupid like like bits of an old era or like a silent like film star trying to say something dumb. And then he'll just like cut you open and like take your innards out of your body and like just bathe in your blood. I think he is replaced Spalding. I really do. Like this type of character is just so invocative of the times we live in. And now art has just overthrown like those characters to become that iconic clown just disturbing and bloody and he's cool honestly out of all the slasher like like stupid clowns i think he's my favorite i do think he's my favorite in terms of like the villain ones we're going to be talking about on this list i think he's my favorite because we're going to be jumping to video games now to talk about sweet tooth which is oh my god Sweet Tooth had a TV show. Twisted Metal came out. There's another video game thing that nobody saw that exists. Uh, I've never played this game. It's a racing game, right? And there's like an evil clown in it. Look, his head's on fire sometimes in these pictures I'm looking at. He's like a big, bulky guy. Was it Samoa Joe that played him in the thing? Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. That's cool. Twisty from American Horror Story, the iconic clown of that era. Man, isn't it weird how far, like, American Horror Story has come? Where, like, that kind of just started off as just, like, a normal show that's kind of, like, scary. And it's become, like, what if Lady Gaga was a vampire in this immortal hotel? And it just spiraled from there. And you're like, I, I guess, you know? This is a freaky looking clown. Like, I can't believe this guy was on TV and people watched it and they accepted it. What a creepy looking guy. Big mouth, blood dripping everywhere, scars all over his body. That's a scary dude. It's a scary dude. You know? I kind of respect that. Respect the drip, Twisty. Respect the drip. Uh, I never watched this season. What season was this? Was this Circus? Was this the Circus season? I'd probably imagine it was, right? I don't know. Freak Show, that's what it was called, wasn't it? Right? I, you know what? I'm joking about like the success and the downfall of American Horror Story, but my favorite season, because I'm a weird fucking guy, is the one where Lady Gaga's the immortal creature in the hotel. I loved that season. <laughs> and I'm like talking shit about it because it's so stupid. What was that? Why was that an idea somebody had? I don't understand. The killer clowns from outer space? How do we feel about them? You walk into any spirit Halloween, they're the, the the creme de la creme. Everyone's got that shit there. I think this is a fun concept, you know? It's pretty simple. It's schlucky and low budget and people respond to that. There's a video game that's out or coming out recently. Like, it's just iconic clown designs, like a classic clown. But now they're killing you and they got guns and shit. What if that happened? I respect it. It's so stupid. And I think that's really cool. I love, like, we shouldn't be trying to take this seriously. It's a clown. It's a clown, you know? Let's not take this shit seriously. I respect it. I respect it kind of. More than I respect, you know, a lot of the other ones. That's the kind of clown thing I'd probably write. Uh, there's a clown from Goosebumps from A Nightmare on Clown Street. I don't think we need to spend too much time on it. I figured I'd just throw that in there so people would know I acknowledged Goosebumps. There you go. Okay, Goosebumps acknowledged, folks. Before we move on to, like, normal clowns, I say normal very loosely. Before we move on to normal clowns, we have to talk about some famous clowns from comic books. And I know what you're thinking. Is there any besides the obvious one? Well, there's the two we're going to talk about, the two obvious ones. Of course, you have the clown from Spawn. And I don't think we could get into Spawn right now without you wanting to murder me. So I'm just going to say, please just look up the, the, the clown from Spawn and... John Leguizamo played him in the movie, and you're just looking at this disgusting, disturbed freak show of a human, 
if you can call him human, I'm not going to get into it. It's just like looking at this fat, bald fuck who just farts and is gooey and just the ugliest thing you've ever seen. But Spawn is so freaking popular and I... Ugh, is This is not Spawn's most iconic villain, right? It's probably Violator. But I don't know, people like the fucking clown, I guess. I guess. I don't know. I had to bring it up solely because it's important to the history of Spawn that you acknowledge this loser. Uh, Spawn is so complicated. It's so tricky to get into. Like, if I tried to explain Spawn to you, you'd just be like, please stop talking to me. And I, I would love to... Like, I could ruin somebody's day getting into the mechanics of Spawn. And I'm, I'm more like the mechanics of, like, Todd McFarlane turning himself into, like, the modern-day equivalent of Stan Lee, turning himself into the face of a comic book and the face of an industry, and now he's just, like, acquiring all these properties to make toys, all because he wanted to get more money from Marvel and they wouldn't give it to him. And then he made this stupid fucking clown guy, which is just the worst. And it's like, if Spawn's Batman, this is his Joker. And that leads us to the, probably, the most iconic clown ever in the history of clowns it's the joker it's the joker like pick your iteration that's a topic we can do another day it's your favorite iteration of the joker i've said this before and i will say it again this is a character i struggle to find interest in the less he is used the more powerful the character becomes we've oversaturated the market with jokers of late i don't need to see more joker I am curious about the next Todd Phillips movie. Does that mean I'm excited for it? Not really. Ah. Even in the comic books, they're trying to bring the Joker back now, and I'm just like, please stop. Please stop. In the video games, I don't care. I don't want to see it. I thought about putting Harley Quinn on this list. I think she's moved away. Well, hmm. Maybe she started off more as like the Harlequin, you know, like the classic set that you would see as like paired with the joker and i guess nowadays she's become more of like the mad clown like the clown princess of crime she's like developed into her own style but i wouldn't necessarily call her like evil either and i don't know if i would ever put that on the list like i think harley quinn has become her own identity where i can't say it's a clown motif it is definitely inspired by a clown but i i, I hesitate to call her a clown like, you can call Joker a clown. I think Harley Quinn has definitely moved away from that title. But maybe not. You know, maybe some people think, like, the white makeup and the colors do invoke a clown. But I think she's just become her own thing now. And I, I can't put it on the list. I can't wholeheartedly put it on the list, folks. I'm sorry. I just can't do it. So out of all those clowns, which ones do you like? I like Art the Clown. The Killer Clowns, I guess. <laughs> but let's talk about a couple of good ones i thought i'd have more on this list let's start with that uh do you remember that show by zach galifianakis called baskets where he's like i am a clown. i'm a clown i studied clowning in france and i come back home to a place where there clearly should not be any clowns but i'm here now and fx got like four seasons out of that joke and he played two twin brothers and louis anderson played his mom and he's a clown in that so that's a famous clown, but nobody saw that show but me and maybe like Zach Galifianakis in reruns, so I can't put it on the list. Now there are two I can put on the list, two iconic clowns that aren't serial killers and aren't murders. Well, I guess one might like, you know, give you a heart attack. Uh, Ronald McDonald, probably the other most iconic clown next to the Joker is Ronald McDonald. He is the face of a company called McDonald's. It's named after him. He has a bright red hair. He's wearing a really weird suit with big old shoes. And he gives you some yummy, yummy burgers. And you're like, yes, okay. Now we're talking a friendly face. He gives to charities. He helps children who are sick. And he's just a, like a nice guy. I do think like lately McDonald's is trying to like push away from like their like you know family of characters that they use like the Hamburglar and Grimace and 
that stuff. They don't like using them often. When they do, it's very sparingly. But Ronald McDonald, I think it's kind of taken on a bigger name now than just being like, he's the mascot. Now he's become just like an icon, you know? Like it's more of a name as it is to like, we we, re- we wheel him out for like special events. He's just kind of like a guy now. He doesn't have his own TikToks or anything, which is maybe something they should consider doing with him. But I think he's cool. I like McDonald's food a lot. We've talked about, like, discarded McDonald's food on this channel before. This character is cool. Nice guy. I respect him. He might freak people out. I don't know. I think he's kind of swell. I got nothing against him. I think he's genuine and, like, polite. And he, like, helps sick kids. And he had, like, they used to have, like, play places for you to play in at their locations. And that's cool. Can you, do you remember... When McDonald's used to have those big play pens, God, that was at a fucking McDonald's. You could just like climb slides that were like 30 feet in the air. What was that? That is so funny to think about. God, McDonald's, what a, what a, what a place. What a, what an era we used to live in. We used to be a proper country, God damn it. You know, now what are we? Now we, like, have a grimace shake and pretend we're dying. God, we make it so easy. We make it so easy for these companies. We just have to make one thing go viral and they don't have to do any freaking work to advertise anymore. It's annoying. It's stupid. Let's get off Ronald McDonald. He's a cool guy. We do like him. We support him. Let's talk about another one that's an icon. Maybe to a specific amount of people, but to me in particular. Krusty the Clown. Krusty the Clown, an iconic supporting character from The Simpsons. You could argue Krusty is in the top five supporting characters of The Simpsons. I think it would go Ned Flanders, Mo Sislak, Mr. Burns, Apu, and Krusty. I think those would be like their top supporting characters. Krusty has gone through everything. You know, he was originally supposed to be like Homer in disguise. He has then taken on a, like being one of the most iconic Jewish characters on the Simpsons. He now has a daughter. He has just gone through so many different things while continuing to be himself. The classic Krusty was this old angry guy who used to smoke all the time. He'd place evil bets against the Harlem Globetrotters and you just loved him. Just like the, the worst guy imaginable entertaining your kid. (laughs) that's what he was and it was kind of cool and you know sideshow bob was connected to him and he became his own character breaking off from that it just worked so well like you, you struck gold with like what is a parody of a children's entertainer it's this crusty old you know angry clown guy and that turned out to be one of their most interesting and well developed characters who has went through hell and back You know, he was framed in the first season. He has a pacemaker in his chest now. He lost his show. He's gone through hell and back, and it's really cool. Just a great character who I I think is doing more for clowns than he is against it. I I think, like, if you... Again, one of those, like, classic sad clowns. One of the classic sad clowns where, like, you want this guy to be better than he is, but he's always one bad, like, you know joke one bad comment away from losing it all and that's kind of kind of interesting you kind of respect that i do enjoy that dynamic so we're going to end on on two more characters now i want to i want to save the reason i'm doing this list for last so we're going to turn to a character i don't know anything about like i couldn't even tell you I can't tell you a goddamn thing about this character, but in my research, this name came up and God, I don't know a thing about it. This is Jiru Tony Doe and they are from Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice. Uh, Google that name. You see a lady who is kind of dressed like a clown. A lot of this fan art is very risque but this is uh this is a character and i think this is like the 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 anime one i'll throw in here for you (laughs) look she has pink hair wears a pink dress has like some rainbow gloves 
and she's like a pretty clown lady god should i say pretty how old is this character god i feel gross okay let's go to the ace attorney wiki jiro tonido was a balloon artist and rakugo performer who is a witness in the murder of her rakugo master taifu taifu tonado what the fuck is this i guess it's about it like an attorney right it'd have to be about an attorney and she's like a clown that witnesses a murder <laughs> oh my god that's funny i like that that's kind of cool actually i'm not gonna watch this but okay and i mean like okay she's she, so she's like a clown and she witnesses a murder okay okay y okay oh my god the pink the pink hair is a wig oh man Oh, man, she has really put on a performance. Is this another hashtag sad clown? Oh, man. My girl. Is her name Balloons? I don't know. Crazy. Okay. Documented age is maybe 30. Maybe 34. Okay. <laughs> what does that mean? Arrested May 13th, 2028. What? 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 <laughs> All right, there you go. There's a uh, Jiru. I'll definitely I'll put her up on some social medias and we can uh, talk about it there. Uh, what is Ace Attorney though? I, I think like I gotta look that up now. But she's kind of she's hot, I guess. You know, fun. Ace. It's, oh my God, that's the guy, Phoenix Wright. Oh, oh, is this even an anime or is it a video game? Shit. Oh shit, I know this guy. He's in the Capcom games, Marvel vs. Capcom. That's where I know him from shit <laughs> sorry okay god i don't know anything okay cool i mean hey smoke them if you got them man who am i to stop you from any of this shit so i guess yeah there you go fun she's fool i do like the aesthetic of this character i'm spending way too much time on this character from a game series i you can tell i don't play games right i had no idea what any of this was all right now the real reason i wanted to do this was because i was remembering a show from my past that i remember watching when i was growing up called the big comfy couch and i was trying to think about the actress who was on that show and i was just like that because that's like that's like my dream performance is to be a children's entertainer. I feel like that'd be like such a like a kosher job where you just show up, you get to be nice to kids and everyone's supporting of you and you get to go home and just like be your own individual. I love that energy. And I was thinking about this show because I just remember watching it and it's like that's so cool. Like she had a puppet and she had she had a big couch. She had a big comfy couch. And I, I just, I love that. Like a big comfy couch. I, I think that's so cool. Just sit on a big freaking couch. And it was a big couch. Like if you, I keep talking up this couch, but it was big. And then the lead character on that is Lunette the Clown. And she's called Lunette the Clown. And I'm like, oh my god, she is a clown. And maybe the most iconic clown to me is Lunette, somebody who I just adore. And I think, like, the actress is, like, anti-Trump or something. Or, god, no. I'm just looking at photos of her, like, next to Trump and, like, some, like... Oh, would you believe what Lunette said about this? I, I'm not going to look it up just because, you know, why dig my grave deeper if I didn't already there? I don't know. She seems cool. Lunette was fun. I don't know. She was nice, supportive. She had friends over all the time. She had like a doll that was like sad and like would talk and stuff. And I, I think that's very relatable. And I just I like that. I think I know what I'm doing tonight. And it's watching clips from the big comfy couch. God, what a, that was a big couch. I don't think you understand how big that couch was. It was a big couch. And she was kind of like a, a like a hobo clown, I guess. I don't know. But her doll, what was the doll's name? I don't care. I'm just all about Lunette because she's the clown. And that, my dear friends, is my favorite clown of them all. So who are my top three clowns? Well, I think it's obviously Lunette as number one for me. 
then it's definitely crusty and then i'm gonna go art the clown and those also happen to be the ones on the thumbnail which i did make before i recorded this so it's amazing how that worked out <laughs> oh great Ugh, lunette i love you darling i love you maybe i shouldn't are you um are you somebody I shouldn't be idolizing? Do you have weird views? Do you remember like, God, it's so stupid. She was like a clock. She she had turned into like the hands of a clock. I just remember watching that and just being like, okay, I cannot move my body like that. Why does that aesthetic like make me like, why do I want to dress like that? <laughs> like if I could wear a hat like that all day, big overalls with little birds on them. God. You never see me again. You never see me again, folks. That'd be it. I'd be done for. All right, folks. I'm closing up the notebook with all of the notes for these clowns. That is going to do it for this episode. And I have to ask, it's obligatory at this point. Who's your favorite clown? <laughs> are you as fucked up as I am and you think Lunette's the future? Or are you a normal person who thinks we live in a society that the Joker would respond well to? I don't really know. Don't scare me like that, though. But thank you all for watching this episode of The Geek Wave. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And of course, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.